A few weeks ago, as I approached these temple grounds where I was to meet a friend, a young woman, a stranger to me, stepped up and said, would you like to know what kind of people these Mormons really are? <laughs> I responded with, I think I already know a little bit about what they really are. To this, the heckler retorted, they surely don't live the teachings of Jesus Christ as they should. My concluding comment was, who does? As I continued my walk to the visitor center, I began to ponder about the actions of those persons who are giving time and money to discredit, embarrass, ridicule, and shame those who have religious views that differ from their own. Sometimes such actions can unify and strengthen those who are attacked. However, in some few instances, they plant seeds of discord, and at times righteous people are hurt by their slander. I doubt that such actions can be called Christ-like. At no time did Jesus Christ encourage us to spend time participating in damaging, destructive criticism. His message was to encourage us to seek, learn, and share all that is praiseworthy and of value as we associate with our fellow men. Only those who are vindictive and cantankerous participate in fretting out and advertising the negative and unsavory. I will be forever grateful for the wise counsel my mission president gave me as I arrived in England to serve as a missionary. He said, Elder Ashton, these people in this land have been at it a long time. If you will keep your eyes, ears, and mind open, you can learn much while you're here. Look for the good and overlook that which is different from your ways. The longer I stayed in England, the more I appreciated this advice. Day by day, I grew to love and appreciate that great country and its people. For their example, in this, for example, instead of freezing in the raw winter weather, I did as the English did. I put on another sweater rather than wasting my time murmuring or complaining. Robert Wise wrote, Nothing is easier than fault-finding. No talent, no self-denial, no brains are required to set up in the grumbling business, close quote. Whether accusation, innuendos, aspersions, or falsehood are whispered or blandly shouted, the gospel of Jesus Christ reminds us that we are not to retaliate nor contend. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. No religion, group, nor individual can prosper over an extended period of time with fault-finding as their foundation. To the world, and especially to members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we declare there is no time for contention. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. The poet Robert Frost once defined education as the ability to listen to almost anything without losing your temper or your self-confidence. Probably we will never be free of those who are openly anti-Mormon. Therefore, we encourage all our members to refuse to become anti-anti-Mormon. In the words of old, can we live and let live? Con certainly one of our God-given privileges is the right to choose what our attitude will be in any given set of circumstances. We can let the events that surround us determine our actions, or we can personally take charge and rule our lives using as guidelines the principles of pure religion. Pure religion is learning the gospel of Jesus Christ and putting it into action. Nothing will ever be of real benefit to us until it is incorporated into our lives. It seems to me there has never been a period in history when it is more important for us to be engaged in pure religion as taught by the Savior. This religion is not to retaliate or to exchange in kind. 
evil actions or unkind statements. Pure religion encompasses the ability to cherish, to build up, and to turn the other cheek in place of destroying and tearing down. Blessed are they who strive to serve him without wasting time faulting him or those who serve him. The discerning realize that it is not realistic to expect perfection in others when none of us is perfect. As we reflect upon actions that do not fit the definition of pure religion, perhaps we should contemplate the nature of this term. Pure religion and undefiled for God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep unspotted from the world. The words are simple, but a basic formula is revealed, namely, Help those who are in need. Build your life around the gospel of Jesus Christ and avoid yielding to worldly temptations. As with most simple formulas, all of us must analyze our own lives and use wisdom and free agency as we apply the basic principles. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is my gospel. And ye know the things that ye must do in my church. For the works which ye have seen me do, that shall ye also do. For that which we have, what you have seen me do, even that shall you do. The doing is always more difficult than the knowing. To keep ourselves unspotted from the world requires taking charge of and ruling our lives from within, accepting responsibility for our own actions, and choosing the role of peacemaker rather than retaliator when those around us are critical or spread false propaganda. It includes being aware that God's work on earth is done by human beings, all of whom have some weaknesses. It encompasses the ability to look for the good accomplished rather than being disillusioned when human failings surface. It includes resisting the urge to proclaim such weaknesses so adamantly that the basic good is overshadowed and testimonies waver. Pure religion is maintaining a balance between sophisticated intellectual information and the basic bread and brother principles of the gospel. Latter-day Saints are encouraged to pursue learning in all areas. However, superior knowledge and academic achievements need to be enhanced by wisdom, good judgment, and spiritual guidance in order to use all that is learned for the benefit of the individual and his fellow men. Some think they can learn of God only by appreciating his handiwork. Mountains, streams, flowers, birds, and animals are to be enjoyed and admired, but this is not enough. In the formal church setting, gospel truths are shared, new concepts are internalized, and new experiences are offered, all of which can result in enriched feelings about oneself and in learning better methods of helping others. One who practices pure religion soon discovers it is more rewarding to lift a man up than to hold him down. Happiness is bound up with helpfulness. Those who fail to protect someone's good name, who take advantage of the innocent or uninformed, or who build a fortune by pretending godliness to manipulate others, are missing the joy of practicing pure religion. Many have found joy by extending mercy and tender care to those around about them. What a strength it is to witness friends visiting nursing homes to comfort patients who don't even have the capacity to express appreciation. There are some who would question God's motives when he allows many to linger in pain and hopeless physical and mental deterioration. While this process is taking place, Others teach us by their compassionate service and patience. One who has served in many leadership positions in the church, even in missions and temples, now without specific assignments, meets each month with those confined in a nursing home and often says, 
What a satisfaction I get each month as I visit these precious souls. Pure religion is showing concern and affection for those who, because they have lost their companions, are experiencing feelings of loneliness and neglect. Recently, I visited with a bishop who has in his ward more than 60 widows. He beamed, I love them all. At least once a week, he and his counselors visit them in addition to the calls made by their home teachers. They are the joys of our lives, he repeated. He might have said, don't you think that is more than our share? Another worthy practice in pure religion is a daily telephone call to each household and housebound person in a neighborhood. A loving older widowed lady said, if I telephone each day, it gives them a lift. And if they don't answer the phone, it lets me know they probably need a personal visit from me. One of these friends couldn't afford a telephone, so this same sister had a phone installed and took care of the monthly bill. Pure religion is practiced when we lift the unfortunate and unusual children. Some of God's choicest earthly spirits are those without meaningful parental care. Many are given family relationships by foster parents on a part or full-time basis. Pure religion is having the courage to do what is right and let the consequence follow. It is doing the right thing for the right reasons. To be righteous or serving or loving or obedient to God's laws just to earn praise or recognition is not pure religion. It is being able to withstand ridicule and even temporary unpopularity with some peer groups when you know who you are and for what goals you are reaching. So many of our young people and older ones also have developed such an inner strength. They have a great influence for good on others with whom they associate. Loving those around us includes being sensitive to feelings of others. As is often done, a conducting officer announced that when the deacons were through passing the sacrament, they were invited to go and sit with their families. One father noticed a boy walk out and sit in the foyer. The next week, he invited that deacon to sit with his family rather than to go through the embarrassment and loneliness caused by not having his own family in attendance. This parent responded to a need of the boy rather than to criticize the leaders for the policy. The action of this father can be enlarged on and put into practice by every member. The safety and protection of each person, especially children, should be a concern for all of us. We can be instrumental in assisting in the protection of each other and being aware of the potential dangers and being willing to do our part to thwart those who would injure, steal, or abuse any person, young or old. Examples of pure religion can be found on every hand. At a funeral about a month ago, I learned of a valiant young lady on a mission in a distant land who, after much prayer and many tears, wrote to her mom just before the terminal illness took its toll and told her that even though she'd like to be at her bedside, she would follow her mother's teachings and stay in the mission field to finish her assignment and search out those who wanted to hear the gospel. From the simple scripture that defines pure religion comes great guidelines. To be unspotted from the world, one must avoid all of Satan's evil plans for the inhabitants of the world. Retaliation, fault-finding, deceit, pettiness, hypocrisy, judging, destroying one another do not belong in the definition of pure religion. Empathy is sincere love for self and our fellow men. Henry David Thoreau said, could a greater miracle take place than for us to look through each other's eyes for an instant? If this were possible, I'm sure we could visit and help the widowed and fatherless and all who need our help with the pure love of Christ and thus be responsive to the needs 
of those around us. May God help us to learn and live the principles of pure religion. This business of lifting each other is a full-time occupation. Pure religion can never be taught not, nor lived by those who are petty, prejudiced, contentious, or unresponsible to the needs of their fellow men. Pure religion is following the teachings of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ does live. He is our Redeemer. He is the head of this church. To this I bear my witness in the holy name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.